<laughs> Let's start again. Okay. Um, so, okay, yeah. So I'm Cristina. I'm from Barcelona, from Spain. Uh, on Drupal.org, uh, it's Sekrina. I'm. I work a little about as a senior front-end developer, uh, but in uh, the community, I'm a UX maintainer and also a front-end framework manager. They could come up with a shorter thing, but anyway. So that's what I usually do in the community, stuff related with Claro, uh, the admin interface, anything related with UX, and obviously front-end and all this stuff. Um, what am I going to talk about today? So there was a session here right before this one about how to improve the admin UI nowadays with the tools that you have. This is about the future. Meaning that whatever I'm going to talk about, it's not in core yet. Uh, or, well, maybe one of the things, but the rest of the thing is just like work in progress, plans, and everything. So it's what you're going to see in Drupal in some years. Yeah. You know how Drupal works. So, yeah. I'm going to start with uh, first with uh, small things, uh, small Claro improvements that you're going to see hopefully soon, soon, hopefully this year, but you know how Drupal is, and sometimes it's not that easy. At least this one is already merged in. Uh, bulk operations, the redesign uh, that we did. Um, so what happened here is that basically uh, we created Claro uh, cloning seven uh, and we changed all the styles. Basically we added padding, margin, things were bigger, the line height, the font size, buttons were bigger for like touch screens and everything was bigger. The problem is that it actually increased the space and uh, that everything took. And like in here you can see four items here, but if you add the book operations in here when you check something, it will be like, you don't even see the list in here. So um, we said, okay, we have to change that. The best way is like uh, to just get rid of that. And the way that it's going to show is when you actually press something, it appears. This is already merged in, uh, so in uh, Drupal 10.1. 10 and this is the only thing that you're going to see. That's the only chair, so. Um, yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the only real thing that you're going to see. This is the only thing that you're going to see for sure in 2023. So more things that we're working on related to Claro. Um, so a guy that is not here now, and I was, I'm going to take that into account. Mike, if you're listening, you will remember that. <laughs> anyway, so the CSS modernization initiative, that's something that he came up with. Uh, basically, as I was saying, we basically uh, cloned seven, meaning it's the same code, we have been ch we've been changing things. And also, like, finally, we got rid of Internet Explorer, meaning that we can use a lot of things. And the plan is like to modernize the CSS across uh, Drupal core, meaning nowadays Claro and Olivero. And uh, on Claro, we have a meta issue to um, make all these changes. And these changes are like things like custom properties, CSS grid, logical properties, well, all these really cool things. And now we could add a few more, but yeah, the idea is like to make some, some changes. And the good thing of that is that we will be able to use all this information to inform future changes. For example, this, like changing the, the, the accent color. Yeah, you see Andy <laughs> there, like he's involved in that. Um, the good thing, uh, well, actually, uh, Andy is the one that, uh, the one that created the, 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 the option to make the changes on, in Olivero. And th thanks to all his work, uh, we got rid of the color module. Well, no. well, you helped on that. Thanks to that. Yeah, anyway. So um, the thing is that we will be able to, at some point, I hope soon, choose a color uh, through the admin UI and then this way we'll have an accent color and hopefully more things. Uh, in theory, uh, and he just remembered that to me a few days ago, that there is an issue 
as we always say in Drupal, there is an issue for something. There is an issue here that is going to provide a parser, uh, going to provide like a parser to read a new YAML field. Yes, another one, but this is going to be useful because it's going to be. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. Okay, nothing related to YAML. I don't have any problem with YAML. Anyway, this is going to <laughs> this is going to be theme.colors.yaml. And well, there's, I hope, a lot of uh, opportunities to improve a lot of things in there. Anyway, this can actually change for some things like uh, dark mode, actually it's super dark <coughs> in here. But yeah, uh, dark mode, hopefully, because we will be able to create palettes and these things. Like uh, the moment that you have variables, you can change things. So living real world. Um, something that, uh, and I know this is the future of about the admin UI, but to actually inform the admin UI, we need to do some work and some research first. So we need to define what we want in the admin UI and for whom. Does everybody here know what are the user personas? Yes, yes, and somebody doesn't know? Well, okay, so thank you just to troll me. Okay, thank you. Okay, no, user, perso <laughs> user personas is like, basically you come up with a, fi uh, a fiction character, kind of, you can put the name, you can give it some um, information like age, uh, where is that person from, but the most important he thing here for us, and which is actually what we are going to do is define uh, behaviors for that person, what is this person going to do with your tool, your, with your software or whatever. With, it's not just software, it's also for products. So it's a really, uh, you, uh, a really used uh, tool in a lot of UI research. Um, so uh, we're going to try to define these user personas uh, so we can inform the admin UI per each persona and know which user every user what is going to need. But there's been some uh, work first uh, about that. Um, does anybody remember the admin UI and JavaScript modernization initiative from a few years ago? Yeah. Okay, so it was a huge idea. We wanted to change everything and we didn't change that much. But there's Claro and there's other things related to that. But one of the things that we did there is like we did a huge UX study and some of the things that came up from there was specifically that, that we weren't giving enough tools to the content editors. We were actually giving a site builder experience to a content editor just removing a few uh, options on the UI. So that, one, that was one of the big deals that uh, came up from this UX study. And we actually created a content editor uh, role and it's already in Drupal core and we want to create a content manager role to add this to Drupal core but the problem is that nobody actually is agreeing on what permission should go in there so user personas actually should help there and we're going to define per each persona what is that we actually want something else that happened uh, over time before just starting all this study is there was a proposal to create a new content creation menu uh, that is basically focused on the people that is going to create content because you finish a website, you give the website and you leave and this people is going to eat your work for years or months and a lot of hours. So the problem is that if for example you take into account the toolbar and you have the, the content section, the structure section and you uh, think about what permissions you actually give to the people at the end. It's like, for example, for the structure, you give uh, menu permissions maybe, you give taxonomy, and the content, uh, the content editor is going to have like, like a bunch of random links over there that won't make sense to them. So the idea of this was actually creating a new menu that would have like all the creation things, that the new things that you can create on a tool, maybe um, I've seen websites, uh, I've seen projects that have like 25 content types. Not sure if that's the best thing, but yeah, that's a, a proposal. And then you could have like the managed content with the lists. That was the idea, basically like on a high level perspective. Something else that happened, uh, like this one in 
2016. They opened that and it never happened. They wanted to actually change the information architecture for the toolbar. And it was a great idea. Just that they wanted to do so many things and change root in Drupal and all the country modules that depend on that. Let's go and change uh, taxonomy, for example. If you change taxonomy from one place to another, like think about the paths. Think about, well, I mean, can be a nightmare. So that's there, that's open. So those are the content, pers the, uh, the user personas that, that we are proposing. Um, I know this is a little bit weird. I, sometimes I've had to explain what's the difference between the administrator and the site builder. Um, how many of you would actually have a content editor and a content manager on your projects? How many? Yeah. Okay. A lot of people say, no, content editor is just the same as a content manager. So that's one of the big deals that we usually we need to give a solution for, for the 80% of the cases, not 100% of the cases. Meaning if you actually, your user is the same, the content editor and the content manager, just give the check box for like the, for the role for the two of them. And actually like just with a basic page that is by default on the standard profile, um, how many people actually use the basic page in your, in your projects, like the page? Yeah, and you just improve that. That's the same. I mean, this is a starting point. You can get rid of that, like the article content type, for example. Uh, the assumption here is the administrator is going to be the person that is going to keep staying on the project when you actually give the keys of the, uh, of the project to the, to the final user. That's going to be the administrator, like the person that is going to update Drupal. Maybe it's the same person that is going to keep improving it and giving more features, but maybe it's not. So this is the assumptions that we are trying to, to, to work from there. Um, we're not setting that in a stone. We are proposing this, and after this, we're going to uh, pass through the community a huge survey. Hopefully, a lot of people will answer and validate if that's correct, if it's not correct, and we're going to change based on that. So this is an example of what we are working on. Uh, this would be like a site builder. I know there is a lot of information, but it's like, I don't know, we are assuming that people are site builders, most of its time it's like uh, Drupal related. Uh, create and manage entities and deals, um, motivations, want to implement the features without actually relying on um, the administrator, for example, or wants to build the best solution without actually, <coughs> or with the minimum effort, and like a lot of frustrations, uh, the AMP interface, uh, the menu doesn't have any, doesn't make any sense. That's, that's the thing that we are starting with. So what's the real implementation for that, apart from informing uh, the work that we're going to do? Ideally, uh, we will come up with roles if, that may, if, if this works out. Maybe not. Let's see what the community actually tells us to do. We, it could actually be just a set of permissions or just some recommendations and at, end up like on Drupal.org and actually modules or country modules have to uh, check that or, I don't know. Let's see what happens. The most important thing is that we're going to run that through the community and with that, we're going to inform other projects. For example, a dashboard. Yeah, dashboard. Yeah. I'm sorry about time. I had to do that. It's like, <laughs> seriously, it's 2022 and we don't have, I mean, what the, you log into Drupal right now and you go to the, your page, admin, like your user page, and it doesn't make any sense. Like, come on. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, 2023. Hopefully, <laughs> uh, we're working on that. But uh, so, for you have a little bit of context. There was, there's, have, there have been like several attempts so far. There was this one on Drupal 7, but the problem is that there wasn't any option like or there wasn't that many options to customize that and the most important thing is that the same dashboard was for site builders, content editors and there wasn't any difference between them. 
So the, the thing, the big point here is which content are we going to put on that dashboard? So they are actually useful for each user, like content editor, site builder, because the site builder is going to use something completely different. Or the administrator, he's going to one, for example, stats from the states page, or security updates that need, he needs to take care of or the content editor will want to see his own drafts or her own drafts or change translations or um, the content manager will want to see everybody's last latest updates, for example. Um, the way that we are implementing this so far is based with La on Lyo Builder. And I know that most of you have, is everybody here? Uh, has everybody here tried Lyo Builder? All these ones, yeah. Okay, so you know there are some usability issues or some things that could be improved. But um, at least we're going to work on that and hopefully if we build that with Layout Builder, we're going to give it also a push. Hmm. But yeah, that's that's also part of the way that we're building it. We're going to create um, one dashboard and we're going to give permissions per dashboard um, and the goal of that is um, to for example <coughs> create a dashboard that is like CEO da dashboard and who's going to have access for that for example content managers or uh, administrators maybe several users need to have access to that we're trying to um, be able to have dashboards per concern that you, you will be able to choose one dashboard that is going to be the default dashboard, but you will be able to actually set other dashboards, like for example, the CEO or the translation dashboard, for example, that not everybody needs to have permissions for that. So that's the idea that we're working on. One, we have something that makes more sense that is like technically uh, more ready, we're going to post that back into the ideas issue queue and see what the, uh, the community thinks about that. So again, it's about feedback about from the community. We're not making the call without actually knowing that. This is the initial idea that we're talking about. Uh, this is uh, currently with, um, with Claro. That's, for example, the minimum um, content that we will have right now, for example, that's the first draft. This is actually a screenshot of the, of the project. You can uh, already check what is in there, and this is, well, some random content that we placed in there before defining. Next thing, navigation. <laughs> wow, how many of you love the toolbar? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, are you, you trolling me again? The default oh. toolbar? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love the toolbar after installing it at the toolbar. toolbar. <laughs> exactly, yeah, so that's the thing. Um, yeah, I mean, it was great the moment that they implemented that, but it's been there like for ages and it lags a lot of things since the admin toolbar actually helps a lot with that, so we have some problems there. And we want actually to change that. Uh, some of the previous work that has happened here uh, is actually um, what I was saying, some work around uh, the information architecture. We actually are uh, basing part of our work uh, on the content creation menu. There was this UI research that we did for the JavaScript and well, the modernization initiative. And the Claro new layout thing probably is that it's something that is not known for most of the community. The next generation uh, layout, we called it. Uh, but it never made it to Claro because we couldn't change that many things and get Claro into core. I mean, we got Claro like a few months ago in core, not that many time ago. So we couldn't have everything in there. So actually, who actually uh, implemented that in real life is Sasha on the Jin theme. So most of the things that we thought about implementing in Claro, Sasha already did that on the on Jin. So well, I'm gonna talk a little bit more more about that. And also some discussion that have, have, have happened lately, and you offer probably have been on a few of those are like additional methods to navigate through the user interface. So why we, do we want to change that? It's common sense, the information architecture doesn't make sense for content users. There is no second level navigation in the horizontal mode by default. Uh, there's too much space when it's on the vertical. I mean, you can't collapse the vertical one when it's on the left. Uh, 
the designs are not to date, and there are, there is some accessibility issues in there. So this is the idea that we are th thinking that we want to implement, like a navigation on the left. Uh, the items in there are based on the initial uh, thoughts that we had for the content creation menu, and this will be uh, something for uh, the content um, content author. Uh, and we were thinking that maybe we can put the admin menu in here and to collapse that. But what are we going to do later with uh, admin men uh, admin editor? Uh, like a uh, site builder, for example, how we, how we handle having two menus here. So this is a really U, important UX discussions that we need to have. But that's important thing. We are thinking about moving everything in there. And this actually leaves us <coughs> some empty space over here. And you probably are thinking, yes, you've seen that design. And this is basically Jin. Uh, Sasha created, like, came up, uh, so he implemented several of our ideas into Jin, and he actually made so many big changes into, on top of that, that a lot of great things have happened in Jin, and Jin has moved really, really fast, something that we can't do in core. So this is, it, a lot of things that happen in Jin are actually being moved into core, and that's a great spirit, uh, that, that's a great place where we are actually testing a lot of things because he actually has the feedback from the community if something works or it doesn't work he will know so we don't implement that in Claro and these layout changes uh, we had so many aspirations when we wanted to do that in Claro but um, life happens and Drupal happens so um, there was this meta issue uh, the really bad name that we came up with was kill the page, basically. <laughs> so the first basically idea is uh, making the changes step by step into uh, Claro's actual current uh, code. And we wanted to first drop things like the form into different layers and get rid of the mm -hmm. background, uh, the white background, and have everything something like that. Next step was going to be like have the sidebar and maybe the, uh, later the top bar. So we would end up basically with what Jane has already. Um, but the problem is that if we're going to do that with the code that we already have in Claro, it's going to take a lot of time. And if we have to do that step by step, messing up people's uh, admin interface, people might actually get pissed. Like, where is my sidebar? Why did you move there? Where is my button to save the page? So um, we're discussing now if we should actually come up with a new thing. <coughs> so we still don't know, but these layout changes are coming to Drupal core at some point. Other navigation changes, navigation changes that we are talking about, uh, uh, about changing and improving, it's like, well, the local, uh, the tabs in general, the local layout actions like call to actions, vertical tabs and also some of the search filters. Like the local tasks, uh, well, primary and secondary, and the call to action, so you know those are the, the, the items over there. And some of the things that we're discussing is, for example, uh, this is something that was uh, proposed uh, on the UX call, and they, they have been discussing this uh, for some time. And this adding, for example, contextual links through the admin interface, this will be something that will help to the life for the site builders. Because if you want to add a new view mode, you're working, you're doing some site building, you want to add a new view mode, how many people know how many steps you have to do <coughs> to actually get the view mode in here? Uh, I think you know what we're, I'm talking about. You are working on the issue thing. Well, anyway, you have to go to Structure. In Structure, create a view mode. On there, choose which entity you're going to put a view mode. Give a name, obviously. Then come back here, but go to the default one. Enable the view mode, and then go to the view mode that you want to work on. So it's like, we just <coughs> had a view mode in here. I mean, you already have the entity that you want to work on. Just give it a name, and it's in here. So. That could be something that could improve a little bit our, our lives. 
Something else that uh, we are discussing, uh, it, the discussion actually started a while ago, uh, actually in Seattle. So when I was saying 2023 for dashboards, you see. So we really need this into Drupal core because you show that you start editing a, a I've just pointed him, he was giving a session right before mine, uh, saying which things could be improved. So you start editing whatever, you click on go back, you lost anything that you had inside the CKI editor, for example. So this is a problem. We already have uh, something uh, on the config uh, wall, and, and basically we'll need to create something from scratch because this is already working. Uh, this is the autosave form. I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, he's been working on that for a while, and the, project, the, pro the product is really, really finished. And he's actually on uh, the version uh, 1.4, and it has more than 5,000 uh, active, uh, active users. So it's, it's a tested module. It works. Uh, basically, the features that it has is that it saves every 60 seconds, or you can enable although it's experimental, that it checks um, if you have changes. You can activate that for content uh, entities, but you can activate that also for configuration. Uh, you can customize whatever this is going to say to the user, and you can choose for which content types this is enabled. Uh, this is how it looks like. Basically, the only uh, feedback that you have is this, so it's not obtrusive, um, and it works. So, there is an ideas issue where we, this actually was one of the feedback that we got from the UX study uh, on the modernization initiative. And while well, I was saying uh, we've had several meetings and the plan is to merge out to form, out to save form, uh, but we need to create a plan. And some of the open questions are, for example, how do we solve conflict resolution? What if you are editing a form, somebody else goes, edit the form somewhere else. How do you solve all these problems? Um, is it going to go into entity storage? Uh, who owns the data, the entity or the user? Um, how do we solve all these things? So we need to come up with a plan to solve all these things, especially because what we would like to have at some point in the future, and obviously I'm not even talking about 2024, this is going to be way in the future, but it needs to happen. Whatever we do with uh, autosave, uh, it needs to account for these changes in the future. So the, uh, the architecture nowadays needs to be available, needs to account for that. So both inline comments and concurrent editing uh, would be amazing. And something else, and this is also like sci-fi or a lot of years in the future. Yeah, I know, it's, it's Rupal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, as you can see, this is a mock-up. I'm not even trying to do that with Claro. I, probably it's not even going to be Claro when it, this lands. But this is something that so many users ask for during the usability study, and there are already a lot of tools over there that actually give that, like, contentful, like, so many uh, tools are already in there doing that. We are better. We could do that. <laughs> I believe. I believe. So yeah, basically, um, I'm not sure if you've seen that. There is some assumptions in here. We could actually just preview the new mode. We actually have that in core. Obviously, it's another page. Obviously, it works how it works. But maybe it's not that crazy to actually create that for Drupal. So if anybody wants to do that and wants to create an initiative, I'm happy to help. Not to say anything but So basically, uh, something else that um, probably I could say this is the last thing that I want to, to share with you. And this is not going to give you that many screenshots. or It's more uh, so you to think a little bit more about that. We all know that the perception about Drupal outside Drupal is that it's not usable, it's too complex. So this is a big deal. But the real thing is that we could actually create the interface way better. The problem is that we don't have budget on the real project. We want to build the project, like create the content type, 
uh, themed off uh, the front end, whatever. How many projects uh, you've been working on actually have had sprint or a budget for uh, improving the usability of, or the admin interface? How many of you have lived that? One, two people, three people, four people in the room, okay. Not, not that usual, a few people, but not that usual. So this is one of the big deals. And I'm sorry if there is a backend person here, but who actually builds the forms? <laughs> backend. How many backend people have UX studies? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, we have a lot of backend user, backend uh, developers creating forms without actually knowing basic stuff. Like as he was saying, if you keep some options, if it's less than six, that's checkbox or a radio button. If it's more, it should be a select box. If it's more than 20, don't put a select box. It should be chosen. It should be like, don't kill the people that is going to use with that first products. So um, these kind of small things are things that um, maybe as a developer, you're not going to think about that. But there's a lot of people within your teams that actually has this knowledge. And um, so actually last year, I had this uh, session actually saying exactly the same that you were saying about, please, more than five, more than six, just use a salad box. But even there's a lot of times that you don't know what is going to be there. What if the person uh, on the front end is going to choose, is uh, submitting a form for whatever, and they have a set of, um, I don't know, a taxonomy that they don't know how many uh, options they are going to have. How do you have to create something that uh, the final user, uh, you like the site builder doesn't know how many options are going to be there. So um, uh, Matt created this thing for uh, e-commerce, Matt Drama, and um, he submitted, submitted the session, and uh, some people have been working on that since then. And this might be a new thing in Drupal core by default that you can enable. And uh, the formatter is going to choose between, depending on the options that you have, is going to choose either the radio buttons or the select box, depending on the amount of data that it gets. So these are small changes. If you see that in your real project, Maybe just don't create that, but just submit an issue with an idea. And some people are going to come after that and make the changes. And this is how we can actually make the user interface easier. Because um, developers, backend developers, won't have UX experience, even though we want it. it never, it's not going to happen. And budgets are going to be budgets. So. So if there is any issue that you can work with, if you know it, just submit to Drupal Core. And that's all. <laughs> Questions? Uh, no questions. Uh, I've never designed an admin, but uh, is everything you talked about just for the Drupal, I mean the Claro thing, or is it going to be a, like a core thing that would go into any uh, yeah. backend? Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah, the dashboard is actually something completely independent from. It's going to be even available for uh, for Olivero, whatever. It's it's going to be a core thing, like the same way other features are in other places, like autosave, like all these kind of things. It's going. I'm talking more. We're talking more about general uh, Drupal core rather than yeah. 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 I know it's a lot of ambiguous, everything in the future. That's why I said it's not going to be something you can touch like this now and know this. Doesn't Drupal.org already have a dashboard that you can customize for your accounts? Sorry? Doesn't Drupal.org already have a dashboard that we can customize for our accounts? Drupal 7, and yeah. it's, a custom, it's a custom thing. So that's, that's the thing. It's, we're trying to do that with Leo builders, so in the future can be actually customizable. Um, People can actually customize that, and yeah. Ideally, we discussed about getting, let, letting the user uh, actually act to uh, customize its own mm, dashboard, but that's also like we need to come up with an MVP that actually gives as many options as we can, but that it doesn't kill uh, the the opportunity to get that in core. 
Are there Slack discussions or meetings happening about this, or it's only the Drupal issues? Which? Any of the... Topics? In general, it's happening in, in, in several uh, Slack channels. In the admin UI, it's uh, you lately just clara stuff on the front end channel. There is a lot of discussions about related about several of these things on the contribute channel. Uh, there is the dashboard channel. Uh, we opened it a few weeks ago. Uh, there is not that many dis that many discussions since we haven't actually posted everything back into the issue queue. And the rest of the things are discussions that we are having that anybody can actually join uh, uh, us, uh, just picking us on the front end uh, channel, me, Lali, or any other people that just let us know that you want to get involved and we're going to try to promote it as much as we can. But at the beginning, we're trying to have like not 20 people in a discussion because everybody wants to be here and we don't get anywhere. So that's, for example, the autosave form. Um, this is a discussion that so far we're having with Christo, that he's the guy that, uh, Christo, the framework managers, uh, and trying to come up with a plan, and when the plan is uh, set up or defined, then we're going to open all this work to the community and see how many people are actually available to help. And how's, it, how's the discussion going in the way of keeping all, all these changes in Claro or moving to a new, a new uh, administrative interface? So, um, so the thing is that, uh, so we still don't know that yet. Uh, we want to change the layout for sure. Uh, we still need to define which changes and we need to define based on which code. Maybe we actually clone Jin, I don't know. Maybe that's uh, an option. We need to see what actually Jin's, but there's a lot of stuff in Jin that needs to be changed. For example, um, <coughs> there is something that we don't want in Drupal core from Jin. Like for example, the ghost button. <coughs> This is a proven thing that it's, they're not as accessible as a, a, solid, a solid button, for example. Um, two votes. It's a proven thing that the user actually expect a change in the in the page when they are doing that. Like that they click and it's saved. If you are not actually saving the page and you're saving everything when you click the button, it's confusing for user. There are a few things uh, from Jin that we want to change or that we don't want to get into core yet. Like for example, um, the, the book operations actually started based on some of the things that, that Jin, Jin did, but we ended up coming up with a completely different solution for that. So that's the thing. We don't know if getting the whole Jin uh, project is the big thing or is the smart thing because uh, Jin actually has a lot of dependencies. It has a Jin toolbar, it has several things that it comes with background, and we don't know. We need to evaluate that. And how the people accept this Jim versus Clara? It's, it's default installation versus yeah. like uh, con the, ve the most used contrib theme. I think it's the most used contrib theme nowadays, like for the admin interface. It's, it's really cool, it's super usable, and it has like a really good set of tools, like for example, see all the things over there on the top, or the, like as you were saying, the, the sidebar, you can actually toggle the sidebar. He has a lot of other things, like with paragraphs, you can drag and drop stuff. It's very intuitive. Yeah. You can change the colors to match your brand, and you're setting something Yeah, that's actually like the color theme, the scheme, or the YAML theme. And the I mean, it's it's <laughs> great. YAML, yeah. <laughs> yeah, YAML. Yeah. yeah, another yeah. YAML. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, these all are discussions that are happening across different channels. Gene, for example, is a place also where you discuss things about Gene. So the Gene issue queue. Most of these uh, things that I'm showing in here, except the navigation uh, and the layout, has uh, have uh, an ideas issue queue. Most of them. So, for example, the thing that I was showing, uh, oh no, I'm going the other way around. The, the thing that I was showing about the view modes, for example, 
that that's an issue. Yep. No. In here. That's here. There. there we go. Mm -hmm. This. This. So this is an idea issue that they posted that and. I'm probably going to ask answers soon with this design. Like, do you like this? Maybe that's a good idea. We can we can come up with a pattern in here and come up with a new um, component or something, a new design or whatever. So, it's across. I just basically gathered all the information that I had and I put that here. So it's across several places. Any idea? Any question? Seriously, if you want to get involved in anything, and don't want to know where to start, just let me know. So I, I've got work for everybody. <laughs> Seriously, and people from Lulabot know. They don't, they don't dare to say that in front of me. <laughs> what can I work on? Oh, Come no, here. Oh, no, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you for coming, and I hope next year I will be able to show something real. <laughs> <laughs>